We're in the Chelsea Piers area, near off the water here in Manhattan, Brunswick, the largest maker of pleasure boats in the world, having their media day here. But we're on a special <laughs> boat right now. Dave Folk, CEO of Brunswick, joins me now. So Dave, a lot of things going on, a lot of boats on display, but we're on a special boat here. It's autonomous. Tell me about it. It is. It's a Boston Whaler. It's one of our best brands, premium brands, uh, 405 Conquest, but has a lot of technology on board this one. And as you mentioned, a development system that allows you to dock the boat autonomously, which is familiar technolo uh, technology for cars, but new technology for boats. So we're very excited about it. Yeah, so basically what my understanding is you can, you can, it can act, auto dock it for you. Right now we're using a technology called Skyhook where it's using the motors to, and GPS, right, mm -hmm. to keep us in place? Yeah, frequently you want to hold a boat in position. Because of waves and wind and current, it takes quite a bit of effort. So the Skyhook system takes all of that away, all of that effort away. It uses a GPS system and maneuvers the engines to hold the boat exactly in position, not just in the same position, but the same orientation as well. So it takes a lot of stress out of that particular maneuver. So Brunswick, we're not just here for the fun on the, on the water. Brunswick had its investor day yesterday, talking about the future of the brand. A big part of that is electrification, and not just electric boats, which we'll get into, but also stuff like house power. So talk yeah. to me about that exactly. Yeah, you know, we, we can use um, electri electrification for propulsion on smaller boats, but on a big boat like this, that requires quite a lot of power. It's much tougher to do. But there's another engine on a boat that not, not many people know about called the generator, and that powers all of the systems other than propulsion. So all of the air conditioning systems, the um, all of the environmental control systems, the entertainment systems on the boat, the electronics. And in this boat, instead of having a diesel power generator, we have a large capacity lithium ion battery pack, about 20 or so kilowatt hours that powers everything on the boat. And you can see right now it's very quiet. There's no vibration, no fumes, no emissions. And this uh, particular pack has another eight hours of power left. And when the power runs down, you switch on the main propulsion engines and it charges it back up again. So much more efficient and environmentally friendly. You, know, you mentioned these smaller boats that will be electric powered. Yeah. We, we saw some, there's a Veer boat out here that's there got is. an electric motor, at the, uh, the Avatar series of electric, mo out, sorry, electric outboard motors. We got a taste of that in Wisconsin recently, which we'll, we'll see that coming up soon. But talk to me about the kind of the business opportunity that electrification offers. I know it's very early innings here, but what does that mean to you exactly? It is early innings, but everybody sees electrification all around them, particularly in passenger vehicles. And it's coming into, marine is a bit more of a challenging environment for electrification. Partly that's obvious, but partly boats are much more weight sensitive for the batteries, they require more power. But we can electrify small boats. We've just introduced a whole series of new small electric outboards, as you said, called Avatar, designed to power small boats. We only launched them in April, we've already sold 2,000, which is a, you know, a big number for marine space. They're popular in the US, but particularly in Europe where there are a lot of regulated lakes that don't allow combustion engines anymore. So this is an important market for us to get into. And as the technology evolves, we'll move electrification into bigger and bigger products. You mentioned that the it's not just what the customer wants, it's also what governments want. So that's yeah. kind of a big mover in that, in that, in that space. Uh, talk about the future of boating here. You know, we see as a, a man uh, riding around us in an electric foil of some sort. <laughs> yes, looks right, like he's yeah. from the future. Uh, <laughs> it's really cool stuff. But I know that you guys are getting into this sort of very uh, recreational type of, of yes. you know, d few hours here and there. Hop yeah. on the board, have fun. What's is that the future? Is it is e-fuels? Is it that? What are, what are we talking about here? Yeah, we see a multi-fuel uh, future for for boat. Boats are a bit more like aircraft or commercial vehicles. You can't electrify everything. That doesn't mean you can't make it more efficient and more sustainable. You can certainly make our engines more efficient. And we're very interested in things like e-fuels and alternative fuels for some of the bigger boats. But part of our job with the biggest company in the industry is to just get people on the water in a sustainable way. So we provide, we have multiple brands with multiple price points to get people out on the water. This is one of our bigger boats. We make very small boats, including the electric ones. And running around us, as you said right now, is um, an e-foil, which is like a surfboard, except it's uh, got a foiling element underneath it and it's electrically powered. So a lot of people like wake sports right now or windsurfing. This is an electrified alternative. This guy going around us can go for three or four hours on that thing. It is super fun, very exciting, and yet another way to get people out on the water. So, you know, boating is, what, I think, a $50 billion built, uh, industry in the U.S., recreational boating. How big of a sliver is that e-foil that's 
for certain. You know, that honest. market is still pretty nascent. Um, we're excited because we have one of the best brands in the market. It's probably about a $100 million market right now, mm -hmm. but we think there's a lot of opportunity for growth in that market. A, a lot of people are not even exposed to this so far. If you saw one, you'd be you know, taken aback. As soon as that gets more exposure, I would expect the market to grow pretty, pretty quickly. So talking about stuff like that, that mm -hmm. eFlow technology and uh, what people are looking into. You, you have your sort of pulse on the consumer. The spending on boats is sort of a very, it's a very discretionary purchase yeah. here, but you know, people love it, but it's not, you don't necessarily need it. Mm -hmm. But you offer a number of products across a number of price points, including that eFoil and this lovely Boston Whaler. What is the consumer telling you, uh, the boating consumer telling you these days? Are things the same, getting better, or getting worse? Well, you'd have to say that consumers everywhere are under more pressure at the moment than they were three or four years ago. Certainly the cumulative impact of inflation and uh, interest rates, you know, if you're financing a product like this, that certainly has an impact. But we survey boaters a lot and understand what they're thinking. 80% of boaters say boating is part of their lifestyle. They'll always be in it, they'll never change. More than 90% of boaters say that they will be in boating at least for the next five years. So we have a very resilient consumer base. Of course, some of them are under pressure. And we can help with that. We can offer some discounts or promotions, maybe to help them into the product, which we certainly will do. But fundamentally, it is a great lifestyle product and a very resilient marketplace. So, uh, real quick, what's your favorite boat that you have out here? Real quick, real quick. Is it the oh, this is my boat? favorite boat that I have out It's a beautiful boat, multi-purpose boat. The Boston Whaler brand is such a strong brand. And it really attracts great technology, I think. Boat this size, with this capability, you can just load it up with that value-add technology and bring it to market in a way that people really appreciate.